This is the value of wrestling. The revolutionary force in wrestling podcasting. Oh, I'm back with another episode. Two in one day almost. It's almost the third of November, but hey, that's okay. So I'm back in studio. I'm going to bring you another rant here because you know what? Today we found out that Ric Flair is all elite, signed to a multi-year deal, signed to help sell his energy drinks. But why would you sign Ric Flair himself to a multi-year deal? What is the plan? What is the game plan for Ric Flair going forward? And I really, really think I can see part of why we're doing this. And we're going to talk about it right after this. It's me, it's me, I'm the Big Time, and I'm in the studio with another Big Time rant right here on the Value of Wrestling YouTube channel. I thank you for joining me, I thank you for tuning in whenever you decide to tune into this and hear me out. Anyways, today we found out Ric Flair has been signed to All Elite Wrestling. He has signed a multi-year deal. Not only that, he's bringing his energy drink, which is going to be the official energy drink of AEW. And Ric Flair is now All Elite. He's been signed to a multi-year deal. And we have to ask, why is Ric Flair signed to a multi-year deal? Why did he sign with AEW? What does this mean for the future, and where is this going to take us? I know I touched on this earlier, but after some more research, some more digging, and just more thought process on it, a lot of things came to per, uh, uh, into mind. It cleared, and I was like, oh, boy. This is newsworthy. This is something we should rant about. This is something we should talk about. And Tony, go jump off a bridge. No, not really. Don't do that. Ladies and gentlemen, Ric Flair went to WWE originally with his uh, energy drink, trying to get WWE to do something with him. And unfortunately, WWE passed. He says there's no hard feelings. There's no disgruntledness. There's no issues there. They just weren't interested. They were too busy. Uh, but my question is why? If Triple H is behind creative and there's a lot of principles there, of course, they are owned now by Endeavor, TKO. So maybe people just don't want to have their name tied with Ric Flair. But I also wonder... If Ric Flair wanted more than just to prop up his energy drinks, that he wanted to be on TV, he wanted to be part of the action, he was looking for another match in wrestling, and WWE and all their executives and all their people are like, that's just not good for business. There's not a win for us in that. They would have probably promoted his energy drink, but probably not given him what he wanted. So he ran and ran. He went to Tony Khan after WWE basically turned him down and ran it past Tony, and Tony was all over it like white on rice. Like, Butter on bread. Tony Khan was all for it. He fanboyed out, and he immediately jumped on ship and said, yeah, we will do it. We will make Ric Flair's woo energy drink, the the energy drink of AEW. We'll sign you to a multi-year deal. And here we are today going, what does this mean? What is this going to mean? How is this going to play out? Why? First, we got Paul White returning to entering action. He's going to get to team up with Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, and... Um, uh, Kota Ibushi to take on the Dodds and Cowes family of who we believe is going to be Will Ospreay, Powerhouse Hobbs, Takeshna, Kyle Fletcher. <laughs> if I would have told people that we would have seen Big Show in a ring with uh, Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho in the future, maybe Chris Jericho you would have bought, but Kenny Omega, oh man, take it back five years ago, nobody would have bought that, nobody would have believed that, nobody would have ever thought that as a possibility, but here we are facing that that Will Ospreay and Paul White could wind up getting into a match together. But we can be, we can give Tony Khan a little bit of ground on that, right? Because it's going to be on Dynamite in two weeks. So it's it's not total a loss. But then he comes out today and hires Ric Flair. After he had Ric Flair on the show last week, giving Ric Flair as a gift to Sting, making a big production, you know, Sting's final match, and pushing the storyline of Ric Flair and, and, and Sting and their history and letting Ric Flair be there. And we just thought he'd be there for a little bit. A short-term deal, a little fun run with Sting until Sting retires and Ric Flair would go riding up. But no, no, no. Ric Flair has been all over all over the place talking about, I want one more match. I want another match. I think I can go. I think I can do it. Ric Flair wants another match. 
And I think that's what we're going to see because I think Tony Khan's a fanboy. Tony Khan signed a multi-year deal with Ric Flair, and I don't see Ric Flair not being involved in in-ring action. Ric Flair can play a manager, and that would be great, but eventually I, you, you know Ric Flair too well. If you know professional wrestling, if you know Ric Flair's story, and if you know who Ric Flair is, you know Ric Flair wants to get in that ring and wrestle with somebody. And it's bound to happen. And the only conclusion I can come to is this is Tony Khan wanting clout. Tony Khan sold out uh, Wimbledon. He sold 80-some-odd thousand tickets, the most tickets sold to any wrestling events, even though the attendance numbers for the actual people who came to the turnstile is about 10,000 off of that. But, hey, congratulations. And you still live off of that here in November uh, and you are going to live off of that forever. We, we sold out the biggest wrestling show. We had the greatest wrestling show ever. We put on the biggest wrestling show. We are the best women we put on. Tony, it, it, it happened. You did a good job, but now it's kind of diluted and everything else that came out of it. Your, your issue with CM Punk and Jack Perry diluted it. Everything else is just kind of whatever. Um, it, it doesn't matter. The show was great based on the performance and the action that we got in the ring. Everything else is... Who, who really cares at this point anymore? But now you want to bring Ric Flair in so you can have Ric Flair wrestle in AEW ring so one day you can give Ric Flair his last match so you can say, we, I, us, AEW was the place that Ric Flair had his final match. We will have the tape library of Ric Flair's final match. Look at what we did for Ric Flair. We brought him back. We made him whole. We brought him back into TNT and TBS, and we gave Ric Flair his last match. And and we will live on forever because Tony Khan was was hand in giving Ric Flair his last match. But what happens if uh, Ric Flair doesn't make it through that last match? Have we seen Ric Flair's last match where they put it on a pay per view event and it did not go over very pretty? Now Flair tried to sell that every way, sideways and upside down, but it was not a very good match. And if we have the audacity of one Tony Khan who thinks he can give Ric Flair a match, his Ric Flair's top retire match in AEW, so he can live off the cloud of that. This is why I tell you, Tony Khan needs to, um, yeah, take a long walk off a of short pier. Tony Khan is a is a fanboy who doesn't care about anything else. Obviously, he 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 lacks principle. He lacks. I don't know what he lacks, really. You know, I want to see Tony Khan succeed, but when I see him do stuff like this, it makes me question: Is he a fanboy or is he a businessman? Is he in this for the business or is he in this because he's just a fanboy who wants to do his ebooking in real life and think he's special because he puts matches together? That should be on pay-per-view match quality. He wastes his opportunity to make money. He's not selling out buildings that he sh could be selling out, but he's also not going to smaller venues that would make his buildings look more impressive. He's not doing anything to help the overall look of what is going on. He's had issues after issues. He doesn't want to support smaller stars briefly. He's got his little fanboy ones. He loves Orange Cassidy. He's great. But how long is that going to last before he moves on? He's moving on to old WWE stars. He's feeling more and more like WCW. And every time somebody braces or calls AEW WCW, they, they take that up like a badge of honor. Like that is something worthy and mighty and grand. And I'm like, WCW died. WCW no longer exists as a wrestling brand because it was bought out by WWE in 2000, and, uh, 2000 2001-ish, maybe two, you know, somewhere, somewhere in time. WWE bought its competition and bought them out. And WCW no longer exists, except in the annals of time, in the in the video library of WWE on what is ever the WWE Network, whether you watch it on Peacock, the WWE Network, Disney Plus in some countries, it, it is what it is. WCW is no longer around, so why would you want to continuously compare yourself to a brand that died, that was not successful, that showed you the very existence of using older talent to get over is great for a little bit, but eventually if you don't bring younger talent forward and continue to bring younger talent forward and give us new younger talent that are doing something, it's going to fail. So if you want to turn MJF into the Goldberg of AEW because that's the only homegrown talent you're spending any time trying to get over, then I, I, I surely, surely, yeah. Tony Khan, you are reckless. You are... I, I, if you let Lick for Flair wrestle and want to claim it's his last match, that's on you and that's for your clout. That is exactly all it's about. You want to give Ric Flair his last match, it's not about the fans. Fans do not want to really see Ric Flair wrestle again. It's nostalgia. It's great. We can reminisce. But we know Ric Flair is not in the capable mindset to wrestle again. He doesn't have the form. He doesn't have the body. He's of age where he shouldn't even be trying to wrestle in the ring because we don't want to see him get hurt, let alone anything worse than that. 
Rick, we love you as fans. We love everything you've given us. There's nothing else you have to give. I'm sorry you feel that you, you have to go out here and continuously prove yourself when you don't. You can walk off into the sunset, and it's going to be okay. And the fans will always remember you. We'll always remember you, Rick. It's not about how we're going to forget Rick Flair. No, you left a, a, a legacy for many, 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 many decades. For at least five decades. You have a le wrestling legacy that goes on and on and through the annals of time. You're a multi-time Hall of Famer. 16-time world champion. One of the best to ever get in the ring. One of the best talkers. One of the best promo people in the world. You get to live in the names of legends like Dusty Rhodes and Harley Race. You get to be on most people's Mount Rushmore professional wrestling. So Ric Flair being in AEW is great if you want to be a manager or a piece that helps the promotion. But if you get in a ring to wrestle one more time, I think you're only hurting your legacy. I think you're only letting your legacy down. And if Tony Khan allows it, it's all about Tony Khan and his clout. So he can say well, they gave Ric Flair his last match. It is bad for business. It is not the answer. The continuation of using older talent instead of helping build up younger talent, giving them Persibus and direction is a failure on Tony Khan, his booking team, his creative, whoever is. It's all on Tony, period. End of story. Because Tony, you're not making younger stars. Yeah, you got MJF going up there, but everybody else is just kind of floundering around, lost. And you're not doing a whole lot to get any of them over. Yeah, you have Orange Cassidy, who's the international champion. He's got a great storyline. But how long is that going to last? You flow in and out of Darby Allen. Where, where's Jack Perry? What happened to him? We haven't heard anything from him since the issues. And what about Wardlow? You ruined Wardlow. I mean, if you want to be WCW, you sure act like it. Let's bring in all the older talent. Let them be the main stars of the show. We'll bring, we'll, we'll bring up some younger talent. So MJF is your Goldberg now. Is that how we're going to go with it? Because that's your, your talent that you're going to build up and make it look stupendous and great. Tony Khan, you are failing, and you're failing miserably at this. You're giving away buy one, get one tickets. Buy a ticket, get a ticket free. At venues that, you're not even selling 5,000 tickets. Go to smaller venues. Go back to the days when TNA recorded in one studio, when WCW recorded in Disney at one studio. Great. you got to have a cat that decides that it's time for them to walk right into the screen when I'm doing my show. Thank you, cat. <laughs> the pets. Don't be angry. It's all good. Um, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, it, it, it just hits me on the head that Tony Khan wants the clout of Ric Flair's last match, and I feel that's what's going to happen. I don't see Ric Flair staying out of the wrestling ring. I don't see Tony Khan trying to stop him staying out of a wrestling ring. And if we get Ric Flair versus Sting at Sting's retirement match, I don't know what to tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the big time. This is the big time rant, and this is surely a rant. Uh, you can drop your comments uh, below. You can agree or disagree with me, and that's fine. Everybody has a right to an opinion. Everybody has the right to feel the way they want, and that's fine. Be respectful in the comments. That's all we ask here at The Value of Wrestling. We respect your opinion, and we understand that you may not agree. You may think Ric Flair is going to be the greatest thing for AEW. You think Ric Flair is going to go out there and have an amazing match, and that's fine if you feel that way. I'm not attacking you that way. I just don't believe this is the answer. I don't believe this is the way this should go. I believe this needs to get talked about a lot more. I hope a lot of the other wrestling commentators out here, a lot of the other wrestling podcasters point out the glaring fact that Tony Khan and Ric Flair together will possibly lead to Ric Flair being in the ring, and that is not good for Ric Flair, and it is not good for Tony Khan or AEW. It is about Ric Flair trying to live out his dying days in the wrestling ring and trying to get Tony Khan clout, and that's what I sum it up to, and I think it needs to be pointed out that this could be a bad idea before it ever gets off the ground. Tony Khan, the wrestling fans, do not really want Ric Flair in a wrestling match. We don't. You can think it, but that's not the answer. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the big time. I've ranted. It's late. I'm frustrated. And I'm going to get out of here until the next episode. Oh, oh, you know, you know. It is time for me to say, till the next one. <laughs>